order to get a better understanding of the issue of data dredging, I must first remind you what the gold standard of hypothesis testing with data is. I will use an example where you want to use a statistical test to determine whether two or more variables are related to each other. For instance, if you want to know whether there's a statistically significant relationship among the general population between the variable height and the variable weight, well, you perform a correlation test, which is most likely to show a significant relationship between the two variables. But you have good reasons to believe that the taller someone is, the heavier he or she will be. It is common sense and it is to legitimate the design. Uh, it is uh, absolutely legitimate to design such a hypothesis even before looking at the data. You test the hypothesis on the data, you produce a graph and so far so good. But you have created the hypothesis before testing it through data. However, it is not always the process that we follow in data analysis and data mining. It is quite common to work with huge datasets that comprise numerous variables. And to begin with, you do not have a precise idea of the possible relationships between these variables. Of course, it is normal to explore this data to begin with. But there's a common trap, dredging the data. Until you find something statistically significant and building a posteriori, afterwards, a narrative around the result that you got from a pretty random exploration of the database. We could use the metaphor of the palm tree, that you are shaking till some coconuts fall. Imagine that you have data on a list of individuals, such as socioeconomic data, like yearly income, profession, and biometric data, such as eyes, color, feet size, whatever. And by crossing all available variables in your possession with each other, you find that there's a relationship between eye color and yearly income. Well, before submitting your result to a prestigious research review and claiming that blue eyes are discriminated against, you should wonder if you haven't found what we call a spurious correlation. That's the thing with big data and large data sets. It becomes pretty easy to find meaningless relationships between variables and you should hold your horses before becoming vocal about your results. Indeed, what you are doing is called data dredging. It happens when you are, especially when you are doing multiple comparisons at the same time. You cannot look at the statistical test in the same way that you do when you perform a single comparison. You must be much more strict regarding the relevance of the results you get. Do you remember about p-value, the indicator that we use to assess whether there's a statistically significant relationship between two variables? As a reminder, the closer p-value is to zero, the stronger the relationship is. We usually take a threshold of 0 0.05. And when you compare the relationship between two variables, if the p-value is lower than 0 0.05, then we can say the relationship is statistically significant. If you are performing multiple comparisons at the same time, however, you cannot take this threshold of 0 0.05. By the way, this is the reason why data dredging is also called p-hacking, because of the hunt for p-values below 0 0.05. But 0 0.05 isn't good enough when you do multiple comparisons. You must consider lower thresholds, like 0 0.005 or 0 0.0001. It depends on how many comparisons, how many hypotheses you are testing at the same time. There's no fixed value. It depends upon the number of comparisons you are making. If you are interesting, they're interested by the exact technique to determine the threshold, you can Google things like Bonferroni correction and so on and so forth. And you have more precise explanations. We'll not delve into the subject here. The takeaway message is, it is a legitimate method to look for relationships about multiple variables, uh, to, to, to go data mining and fishing for relationships, but you, you should be very cautious about the ones you deem significant by applying corrections upon the usual indicators, usual metrics. Can you see now the level of suspicion that you must have in the field of statistics? There are situations where the argument is valid, backed by graphs and statistical tests, where validity conditions are respected, and even in such case, sometimes it's preferable to dismiss the claim. Damn, data science is scary. <laughs>